just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you've heard me pray. I just want to thank you for all. Okay. Let's stand and turn to 348.
Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see you out. Good to be able to be out. I tell you, it's been a pretty day, even though it's been, uh, uh, even though it's been raining and drought and drabbly. Uh, if you would talk to somebody that's been in the hospital all day today, if they could have been out day, they'd said, "Boy, it's been a real pretty day." And uh, it's good to be here. Good to see you out. Good to see Joe back with us. He's been knocked out there for a little bit. It's good to see all of you. Uh, I tell you, uh, I watched the service on uh, Sunday on YouTube. Tried to get it on Sunday morning. I got everything but it. Uh, <laughs> and I, I got some Sandy Ridge Baptist Church uh, that called on the telephone. And uh, But anyway... Uh, we got it on Sunday night and had a good service. 
And I tell you, I want to brag a little on Brett there. He has he done himself. And, uh, that was really good. And uh, we, we appreciate young people that'll uh, step out like that. We're going to pray before we uh, get into the Bible tonight. Uh, I wonder if anybody's got an object of prayer, anybody. Uh, remember uh, Valerie and Ronnie? Yeah. Valerie's doing some better. She's still with quite a bit of pain. Uh, the neck's in a cervical brace, and that's hard for her to get used to. She's still sleeping in the recliner. Yeah. So, eating soft foods, that's just not her. <laughs> eating raw food. Soft. Oh. So. And uh, but just pray for her. She's having a hard time. And uh, Ronnie pray for him. Amen. Amen. Yep. I just like to say I appreciate the Lord for the amazing that and every time. Appreciate the church praying for me. Amen. That's good. He he really really like like yeah. 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 I mean, to tell you, I have a new call. I mean, to tell you, I, I eat your part of dessert for you. <laughs> Good. <Yeah. laughs> no, could be safe tonight. I actually remember my stepfather who's going to test tomorrow. Amen. Pray for him. I also remember a man I used to work with passed away, Bill Evans. Remember his name? Who? Bill Evans. Hey, Amen. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Somebody else. All right, James, you pray with us. If you got your Bibles, turn with us to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. We want to talk to you a little while from 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 13. Uh, we'll be reading down. We'll, let us start in chapter, uh, uh, verse 11. <clears throat> it's uh, not what I was going to uh, preach on, but it's so good. I'll just read it. It's, uh, ain't, it ain't it all good? Amen. Amen. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. That's right. For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. And now by the faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Yes. I want to talk to you a little while tonight on something, I, I, as far as I know, I never remember preaching on it or even uh, talking about it much. Uh, but uh, we all asked the question at one time or another. I know I have. Will we know each other uh, in heaven? Will we know each other when we leave out of here? Uh, let me say this. Uh, we're not, uh, we're not spirits that'll be floating around like fog. We're going to be uh, human beings with a glorified body. And we'll not lose our humanity when we leave out of here. We will still obtain 
uh, our structure, we'll still obtain uh, 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 who we are. I really believe that. Uh, you remember that. Uh, uh, you remember that uh, the disciples that uh, was walking along with Jesus down the Amanus Road. Jesus never lost his humanity, right. even though he went back to heaven. When he right. uh, took upon himself uh, the form of a human being, it will be there forever and ever and ever. And when you see him, you'll see him just exactly as he was on this earth. Right. And uh, the disciples never distinguished him from a uh, from uh, uh, ordinary person, uh, but he was a glorified Christ. He was uh, a savior that had been risen, and we wonder what kind of shape we'll have. And uh, the Bible, uh, the Bible don't uh, uh, it don't uh, uh, really tell us exactly what we'll uh, look like, but it tells us enough to know uh, that we'll be. I read you here where it said uh, we'll we'll be known as we're known. Uh, you have to pray for me now a little bit because uh, I ain't at myself exactly, but I'm do, I'll do the best I can. Uh, but, uh, but now when uh, uh, we leave out of here, uh, you know as people often refer to it as the next life. Let me tell you, if you're a Christian, there ain't no next life. You done started on your eternal life. And there's just a transition there when death takes away this physical body and then uh, the spiritual man uh, will really come alive. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little while on uh, will we really know each other. And uh, the Bible don't speak distinctly in either way on that. You might disagree with me. If you do, it'll be all right. Uh, the Bible said, Peter said that the Word of God is of no private interpretation. I mean, and the reason, and let me tell you, the reason that these uh, different denominations have some different beliefs is because it's not because one side's evil or ungodly or low down, uh, but because they uh, interpret the Bible a little different. Now, uh, you, you and me, uh, we uh, will, even though we agree uh, wholly on the fundamentals of the Word of God, uh, there'll be places that uh, we'll disagree on. And there's where you've got to uh, have a little Christianity about you. And don't run off and say, if they don't believe it's like you are, they're devils and uh, no count and, and going to hell and all of this and that. Uh, they, hey, this is America. You can believe, you got a right to believe whatever you want to. And when we, uh, uh, you say, preacher, you mean you're a compromiser. No, I'm not a compromising. Uh, these things in the Bible, we've all got to believe like. Uh, that's about the creation. That's about the virgin birth. Uh, 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 the, the death, the burial, the resurrection. And there's just one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Uh, but I want to take some, uh, some verses, some scripture tonight, uh, why I believe that we'll know each other in heaven and when we uh, leave out of here. Uh, because that, uh, and I've got a lot of scriptures that uh, we won't get through tonight, but sometime if you want to take this up again, uh, we will if the Lord permits it. Uh, but uh, but uh, there's a lot of scripture in the Bible uh, that will let us go. And you know that's how that uh, you get the, th the truth of the Bible, uh, not because somebody says it, not because you read it in one place, uh, but you compare spiritual things with spiritual things, and then it'll work out. Uh, but I believe, that, uh, uh, I believe that we can see in uh, Luke chapter 16, uh, there's the rich man and Lazarus. Both of them died. All of you know the story. How it is that uh, there was a certain rich man that uh, that he was dressed in purple, fired sumptuously every day, had everything that he wanted, everything that the world could afford. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, he didn't have really uh, what was needed. On the other hand, there was Lazarus laying down at his gate, uh, full of sores. He had. Uh, some kind of disease that the doctors wouldn't even touch him. Uh, the dogs came and looked at his sores. Uh, and the thing happened that's going to happen to everybody. Uh, both of them died. The Bible said that, uh, the rich, uh, that Lazarus died and the angels come and carried him into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. Now we see two different people in two different places in two different circumstances, uh, but yet uh, they was the third person there who was Abraham, and they knew each other. 
Because the Bible said, uh, the rich man said unto Abraham, he said, Abraham, uh, would you send Lazarus that he uh, may dip his finger in water and touch me? I just touch my tongue and cool it, for I'm tormented in this flame. He saw, the, he saw Lazarus. He had never saw Abraham. Uh, he had never saw a picture. There wasn't any photos then. Uh, there wasn't any screens that he could see the picture. Uh, but he knew who he was. And he recognized him. And there, uh, the, the, the Abraham said, In thy life I had good things. And Lazarus had, uh, I mean, he had a bad life. But he said, Now he's comforted and thou art tormented. Uh, they knew each other. It didn't matter where that, uh, uh, whether they went to hell or where they went to heaven. And then uh, there was a recognition of the people on the other, uh, on the other side. Uh, we see that uh, the rich man, he knew Lazarus uh, because he could see him. And he said, would you send him that? He said, I got five brothers back home and uh, none of them saved. And uh, I'm paraphrasing now. And he said, uh, if, you'd, uh, send, uh, he, the, if you'd send Lazarus back and let him preach to him. And, then, and, and uh, Abraham said, he got Moses and the prophets. And then uh, if they wouldn't believe that, and the rich man said, if they saw one who rose from the dead, they'd believe. And, and Abraham said, he got the, uh, Moses and the prophets. They got the Word of God. If they wouldn't believe this Word of God, and then they wouldn't believe though uh, one rose from the dead. Right. And uh, you see, uh, what he was saying, if you won't believe the Bible, if man won't believe the Bible, if an angel from heaven come around and sit down on the side of their bed and then told them about uh, what was coming on down the road, uh, they wouldn't believe there. Uh, but yet, uh, he said, and, but remember uh, that Abraham knew the rich man and Lazarus. And the rich man, uh, he certainly remembered Lazarus. He remembered how he looked. He remembered uh, which he had passed him by the day. Uh, but now, I don't believe that he had any swords. I believe that his skin uh, was just as smooth as a baby's skin. Uh, you see, there's a transaction. And when you leave out of here, uh, brother, the, you leave stuff like that behind. Uh, sickness can't come and uh, death can't follow in. And, and uh, you'll never see anybody that's crippled. Uh, but here, uh, let's go on. I believe in uh, uh, Luke chapter 9, we read about uh, the transfiguration. All of you read about the transfiguration. Uh, here in the book of Luke chapter 9, we, uh, uh, find, uh, we find out that the uh, uh, that, uh, Bible said in, in uh, uh, Luke chapter 9 that uh, it came to pass that eight days after these sayings, he took uh, Peter and John and James and went into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistened. You see, he's being uh, transformed. Right. He was being like you and I will be one day. Uh, he was a being, uh, uh, th th they was really a seeing his glorified body. Right. Uh, you remember in the book of Romans chapter 8, uh, we get to talking about did the Lord know us before we was born. Uh, he certainly did. The Bible said, uh, th and them... Uh, and he's talking about that God say they, he, them he did pre, uh, predestinate. Uh, he called them, and he justified them, and he glorified them. Uh, did you realize that God has seen me and you already glorified, uh, just as we'll be in that day? Uh, but as they prayed, the fashion and his countenance was altered. And behold, thou talked with him two men, uh, which were Moses and Elijah. Uh, you see, there was two men there. Uh, Moses had been dead for 1,500 years around, and they knew him. Elijah had been dead for around 900 years, and they knew who it was uh, because that, uh, there was a recognition there. Uh, and we see that, uh, 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 we see that uh, when he appeared in glory and spake of his decease, and well, let me read verse 30. I skipped a, a verse there. And behold, I talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, uh, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, uh, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Peter's, uh, Peter and they uh, were with him, were heavy with sleep, and they uh, were awake. They saw his glory 
and the two men that stood with him. I mean, they knew him. They knew them. They'd never seen him before. Uh, did you realize that uh, uh, sometimes we'll uh, go to a reunion or somewhere, they'll put a big patch on you with your name on it, and you can read that name. And, and, uh, and I meet a lot of people I wish they'd have had a, a patch on with their name on it. I'm pretty good at faces, but I'm terrible with names. And, uh, and, uh, uh, but they, they had never seen Moses and Elijah, but they knew him. Hey, I don't believe, you can believe whatever you want to, uh, but, but I believe when we get to heaven, there won't be no introductions uh, because we'll know each other. Uh, you say, well, well preacher, uh, you mean we'll know people we've never saw before? Hey, there's going to be a great change. We, there, there's going to be a great difference in us. Uh, there's going to be a great knowledge. Down here, we have to, uh, we have to, uh, we have to wear name tags and we have to tell people. I meet a lot of people and they'll know me and, and, I, and I, I can see them. I see their face, but I can't place them. And sometimes I can, uh, I was talking to a man not long ago and uh, I asked him, and I didn't know him from Adam. And uh, I said, well, uh, how's your church you doing? And he said, fine, and he never mentioned the name of it. And I said, well, still got the same pastor? And a lot of times they'll tell me the preacher's name. I remember uh, wh when I was there, and I can play. And he seen what I was doing. And he said, you ain't got a bit out of who I am, have you? <laughs> I said, not a bit more than the man in the moon. And he, and he told me. One morning, I went to, had to go to get a checkup at the doctor's office. And I went to Burnsville, went down to the old hospital, and and my doctor's office is down there. And when I come out, there was a lady had taken blood samples in the hall there. She had people, I guess people that was on blood thinner. Uh, they had to check it. And I wore uh, uniforms. That's when I worked. And I stayed greasy and dirty. And I didn't want women to have him to, uh, to, uh, to wash every day. But I rented clothes. And I come by and she said, hi, Phil. I said, howdy. I got on down the hall and I, I think, how did she know me? I bet you I've been in service with her. I went back, and I said, hey. I said, how'd you know who I was? She said, your name's on your shirt. <laughs> I felt like an idiot. <laughs> but now there won't be none of that uh, in heaven, because we'll know. I read you some scripture there that said we'll know as we're known. Right. And, and I, I really believe that. Uh, I may have some funny beliefs, and you may say, Preacher, you're a dream, and if I am, don't wake me up, because I'm having a pretty good time right where I'm at here. Uh, and uh, you see, uh, uh, the transfiguration, I believe, illustrates uh, that we'll know each other. Peter said, Lord, it's good to be here. And I can see that, can't you? I may be right in the presence of the Lord, and there is Moses and a great seed, I believe. And I'm going to tell you something here, and you can believe whatever you want to, but I believe. Uh, you remember the Bible tells us that uh, God, God buried Moses. Uh, Moses died, and God buried him. No man knew where he was buried. And I used to wonder about that. Why did God bury him? And and then, uh, and I never heard nobody or read no books on it or nothing. And uh, one day it come to me not long ago, if, uh, if God had let man bury him, if Moses had had a big funeral, they'd have put up shrines and they uh, would have put up, uh, uh, they would have put up uh, great, uh, great markers of telling about it. And men would have been worshiping him before long. Uh, but God buried him. Now, uh, you remember over in the book of Jude, it said that, uh, yet Michael the archangel does not bring railing accusation uh, against, uh, uh, against, my, uh, against the devil or Satan uh, and wouldn't argue with him and when he was disputing over the body of Moses. I really believe that uh, God sent Michael to get the body of Moses. You see, uh, they had to be a resurrection there. Uh, they had to be something come up. And the devil was there uh, to dispute about the body. Uh, the devil would be uh, at every saying of God uh, to keep them from coming out. Uh, but he is defeated and there's nothing he can do about it. And we see Moses there uh, that was transfigured. Uh, you say, do you believe he went back there? I don't know. I mean, that, that's not explained. 
Uh, but brother, I believe he looked just like uh, you and I will see him the first time we look on him. And there, uh, uh, well, let me read you that scripture over there. I, I ain't that myself hardly, but uh, the, in verse 9 of Jude it said, Yet Michael, the arch, arch, archangel, who was contending uh, with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, do us not reign against him, a railing accusation, uh, but said, uh, The Lord, I rebuke thee. And uh, uh, you see, the, the devil, he would, uh, uh, he would hinder every resurrection. Uh, you know, and let me jump around here a little. Uh, maybe we'll get on this some other time. Uh, but, uh, you know, Paul talks over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He said that, uh, uh, that at the second coming, Jesus is going to meet us in the air. Uh, the dead in Christ shall lie first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them uh, to be with the Lord uh, forever. Well, he's going to meet. And the reason I believe that the Lord's coming out in the air, He's not coming back to the earth when the rapture comes. Uh, he's coming in the air. I believe that He's coming out. I saw that if the devil I tried to uh, tried to hinder that resurrection, he'd take us out by force if he had to, and he could certainly do it. And another reason, he was anticipating and wanting to see us and be with us so bad uh, that he just couldn't hardly wait till we got there. He just run and made us. It's like the father did the prodigal uh, when he saw him coming home. And brother, I'll tell you, uh, I believe that we'll uh, know each other because that uh, in heaven, uh, the Bible makes it that uh, it's like the Christian home. You know, where, where's the happiest place in this earth? Is home. You say at church, there has to be a happy home before you can have a happy church. The church goes as the home goes. The first thing that God uh, put together and instituted was man and woman, and it was marriage, and He established the home. And uh, and uh, uh, that's the ha uh, some of the happiest times that I can remember. And some of you the same way is when you was growing up, uh, when you was at home. Amen. We may not have had the things of today. I mean, but hey, we always had plenty. Uh, uh, we always had plenty. Uh, we got out, we worked, and we farmed, and uh, picked berries and dried fruit, and. Uh, kill game and so forth. We raised hogs and beef and chickens and uh, so forth. And we always had uh, plenty to eat. But uh, more than the food that we eat when we sat down together and my dad would say the blessing and then uh, we'd, uh, we'd eat. And we ate us a fellowship. Hey, there's a fellowship at home that you can't find nowhere else. And, you know, I got, uh, well, I had three sisters. One of them's passed on. Uh, but, I knew, I knew every one of them. I mean, the very minute I seen them, I knew who they was. I knew who my grandparents on both sides was. I knew who my cousins and my aunts and uncles was uh, because uh, they was part of the home. And folks, one of these days when we get home, uh, we'll see each other. We'll know each other. And we'll be at home. I mean, just as... Uh, uh, just as... Uh, uh, just as... When you go home and you get up in the morning and whoever's uh, uh, there, it may be your husband, your wife, or your children, uh, but you don't have to ask nobody who they are. You don't have to get a photograph out and look with their name on it. You know who they are. And I believe when we get to heaven, I believe that, uh, uh, that the home, we'll have a home, and I believe that we'll know each other. More than that, I believe that home uh, hits the Father's house. Uh, it's not our house, it's the Father's house. And uh, when uh, you get at the Father's house, uh, 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 we'll be together, our siblings, our uh, brothers and our sisters, and we'll know them. And when we get to heaven, I believe we'll know our husbands, our wives, our children. I don't believe we'll have to run around and ask anybody, have you seen them? I don't know how it'll be, uh, but uh, hey, I'm preaching tonight and I can uh, believe whatever I want to. And I believe, I really believe uh, that somehow 
when we get there, these people that I really want to see. Amen. And I believe when we get there, they'll be close enough to where we can see them. Amen. I really believe that. I don't believe we'll have to hunt and go around and, uh, and uh, poke one another and say, have you seen this and have you seen that? But we'll be at the Father's house and we'll know, hey, listen, uh, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And, uh, and, and uh, I, know my, I know my sisters. And I knew them the very minute I saw them. <coughs> Not only that, it talks about a family circle. You know, there's an old song, Will a Circle Be Unbroken? Right. There's, I believe, and you can believe whatever you want to, but I believe we'll kind of have families in heaven. I believe we'll uh, I mean, I don't believe we'll get off and, and, uh, and, and it's be clannish, and, but I believe that we'll, we'll know each other as we've known them on earth. Amen. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. It's like I said, you can believe anything you want to. But I believe that according to the uh, uh, Word of God. More than that, our names are written in heaven. Now, uh, there's a couple of times in the Bible that you've got to write shout any time you want to. When, you, when, pe when men treat you bad and uh, put you out of their company uh, because of him and, and, uh, and they tell lies on you, you know what he said to do? He said, jump with joy and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Amen. Shout with joy. Yeah. And then remember... When your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you've got to write to shout. If you're at church, you can shout. If you're at home, you can shout. Uh, if you're out at Walmart, you can shout. If you just remember that your names are written in the Book of Life, and then you've got to write to shout. And if our names are written down, uh, hits when you see your name written down, uh, that is the mark of the individual. That is the mark of somebody. And besides that, the Apostle Peter said, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we, have, we have a reservation made. We have, we have uh, something in glory uh, reserved in heaven uh, for you. Did you know what? Uh, and if you have a reservation made, you have to have a name. You can call and, uh, uh, and you can get a reservation made, but stay in a hotel or uh, maybe go somewhere to some play or something. They put your name down. And you have to be that person. It's your reservation. And besides this, if you got a reservation down, there's a date there. You know, the Bible said, Peter's talking about we have a, a inheritance in corrupt, will undefiled, I reserved in heaven for us. If there is a reservation there, our names are there. And the date we're going to arrive is there. You say, I don't believe that. Well, you, you don't have to, but I do. Uh, our names, uh, it's, written, it's written in heaven. Hebrews talks about it as being a better country. Hebrews is a book of better things. We have better sacrifices. We have better hopes. We have a better Sabbath. We have a better priest. In fact, we have a we have a perfect high priest. And when Jesus took his blood and went before God and marched in right before God and was accepted of him, and then that made us as perfect. Because you see, a priest, when he went before God one time a year to put the blood on the mercy seat, you know what would happen? And then all of the, uh, uh, all of the people of Israel would stand in the outer court and uh, they'd stand outside of the tabernacle. They no doubt couldn't get in. And they'd listen for that uh, priest to go in. And on the bottom of his robe, uh, he had a, a palm granite and a bale and a pomegranate, and a bale. And when he went in, uh, he had to take the blood. First of all, 
uh, he had to go to the laver and make sure uh, that he had washed himself and cleaned himself uh, because a priest had to be clean before he went into the presence of God. And then uh, the sacrifice had to be perfect uh, when he went before God. Uh, you say, well, there wasn't nothing per perfect before Jesus uh, as perfect as it could be. It was a type of the Lord Jesus. When Jesus took his own blood, according to Hebrews chapter 9, and he took and he appeared before God, and he took and uh, I, you can believe whatever you want to. I believe that he sprinkled it uh, right, on the, uh, right on the mercy seat Amen. and there uh, before God. And when he sat down at the right hand of God, a priest was never allowed to sit down in a tabernacle. Uh, he was never allowed to sit down. If he went in before God, and then, uh, and he went in before God, he was unclean, or the sacrifice was unworthy, and then he died. And then bells quit ringing. You remember, uh, I've uh, went to churches a lot of times, and it'll be a quote from the book of Habakkuk, and it'll say, uh, the, let the whole uh, uh, earth be silent before the Lord, uh, for the Lord is in His holy temple. The reason they was silent, they was listening for them bells. They was listening to make sure, as long as they could hear them bells, they knew that everything is going all right in there. But yet, when Jesus sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat and then sat down at the right hand of God, that proved that the priest was perfect. That proved the sacrifice was perfect. That proved that God had accepted it and salvation, nothing could be added to it. You know, it's testifying another day about uh, the creation and uh, boy, it was good. And the Bible said it was very good. For six, on the seventh day, God finished His work and rested. It wasn't that God was tired. No, sir, God could have been a-going till now, and He wouldn't have been tired. Right. It was that they wasn't anything else that He could do to perfect it. Wow. Hey, folks, when God created this thing, it was perfect. Yep. And when He uh, instituted salvation, it was a perfect salvation. Uh, nothing could be added, nothing could ever be added to it from then on. Right. And we see uh, The Apostle Paul, he, he, he talks about it. And Paul tells of uh, the joy that's in heaven. He said, I knew a man about, about 14 years ago where anybody out about it, I don't know. He said he was caught up into the third heavens and uh, heard things. He didn't say he saw things. He said he heard things that was, uh, uh, that was unlawful for a man to utter. Right. Yeah. Rather, he, uh, you say, what did he hear? I don't know. He said, he said, it was so good, I can't tell you about it. Probably he started telling, he'd start shouting, and that'd have been it. But he, he, he talks, he said, you know, and let, and let me say this, and I'll hush, I don't want to keep you too long tonight, we appreciate this good crowd out. Uh, but uh, over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, let, let's turn over and let me read you that. I can quote it. Or sometimes I can quote it. Uh, because he is coming back. Uh, where you believe it or not, it really don't make any difference. It, it ain't going to hinder the Lord. But one reason I believe we'll know each other, you know, uh, there used to be an old song, and I believe it was the Standing Brothers used to sing it. I'd like to be a standing at Mother's grave, uh, the resurrection. He wouldn't have done him no good. She'd have come out of our face. He'd never seen her uh, when he left out of here. I really believe that. Uh, but the Bible said, and there was a bunch of young Christians there in uh, Thessalonica that uh, they'd been a teaching that there was no resurrection. Uh, and some of them talked that the resurrection was done past. Adam so confused. They didn't know what. Uh, to believe. And Paul said here in verse 13, uh, But I would not have you to be ignorant, uh, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Right. Now he said, I don't want you to be ignorant about it. Uh, and as I've said, ignorant is, don't mean stupid, it means not knowing, not learned about it. Right. 
And they didn't know about it. And Paul said, I'm going to tell you about it. And he said, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself, the Lord Himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. With them. With who? With them that has died. And them that is caught up. I mean, uh, we could be caught up here before we leave this church tonight. I mean, it can come at any time. I really believe that. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Uh, uh, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we, all of us, ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another uh, with these words. I don't know, I've tried to imagine. I've tried to imagine. I've seen, uh, I, I've seen some, uh, uh, some uh, touching uh, uh, meetings. I've, I've seen soldiers come back from the army and they'd meet their wives or their moms and dads, and boy, they'd be hugging and crying. I've seen people that had been in the hospital and they didn't think it was going to make it, and they'd raised up, and they got to come home, and they'd be a reunion, but they'll never be in a reunion like he'll be when we go out of here. Can you imagine what it'll be? Can you imagine people that life has been completely altered because people has done gone on? Can you imagine mothers that their little babies died when they was little? I wanting to see them and to meet them. Can you imagine? Every one of us, everybody sitting in here tonight has got somebody that they want to see. You say, preacher, I want to see Jesus. Certainly all of us do. But I want to see somebody else too. Yeah. I got a lot of good friends. I've helped in their funerals. I've followed them to the graveyard. I've been pallbearers. I want to see them. There's going to be a reunion. Right. And I believe we'll know them. Yeah. The very minute we see them. Yeah. I believe it'll be all right to hug them. I believe it'll be all right to tell them how much we love them. Well, how we miss them. You know, we don't know a lot about heaven. But we know enough that I sure want to go. Well, right. We know enough that I sure want to go. Uh, it'll be, if the Lord don't come back pretty quick, me and James was talking there. Uh, was talking about getting out of this place. There won't be no heartaches or nothing. And I said, if the Lord don't come, then you're just going to be out of it for long anyhow. And, and, and I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's just natural. You can look at us and tell that uh, we, we won't be here long. But it'll be all right. Because... I think about this. Jesus said, He that liveth and believeth on him that sent me shall never die, right. but is passed from death, uh, from death into life. Right. Now, folks, listen. And then he went on to say, Believest thou this? Yes. I won't believe that. Yes. Jesus said, If you're saved, if you uh, are born again, if you got Jesus in your heart, even though the body may collapse, even though the body uh, may deteriorate, and, uh, and, and he said, you'll never die. Right. If you're here tonight and you're saved, you don't ne you'll never experience what death is. Right. They may be a physical uh, passing. I had a, a stress test 
two or three years ago over at the hospital at Spruce Pine. And that nurse said, now, we're going to give you, we're going to shoot this up in your arm. And uh, said, you're going to have some different feelings. And he said, you're actually going to feel like you're dying. He said, he'll feel just like death coming on you. I said, well, I'm ready. Let her go. And I don't know. I felt funny. Felt warm, but I, I had never died. I didn't know what death felt like. But uh, she said, did you feel like you was dying? I said, I don't know. <laughs> and feel like you squirted warm water in my veins. And, but we'll never really see death. There's some things in the Bible, and I ain't going to start up again. There's some things in the Bible we'll never see. We'll never see the Antichrist. Right. Except in the battle down, uh, down there in the uh, Valley of Jezreel when we come back. Right. We'll come back with Jesus. Yeah. And he's going to destroy that outfit. Right. And I don't know, we, we may not even see him, but don't look for him. Because you ain't got nothing to do with him. Right. There's some things we'll never see dead. I've been with people. I've been with people that's died. And they just slip out. And they just, their breathing just starts getting slower and slower and slower. And they finally quit. Me and William will sit with my next door neighbor one night. Cancered. Took him over and we were sitting there with his, with his, wife and he had started breathing a little down, down, down. And I've seen people die a hard death. But listen, don't fear death. Look forward. If you ain't got nothing to look forward to, look forward to seeing somebody that you love, you want to see. And I really believe, you can believe whatever you want to, I really believe that we'll know each other in heaven. In heaven. Because of who we are. I hope I ain't confused you. If I have, I'll be studying the Bible and get straightened out. Uh, pray about it. I wonder if anybody's got anything before we go. Me and Holly's on the phone. I called her and told her he's coming up to get me. She said, well, I'll try to get over there before they come up. And I said, well, it don't matter anyway. I said, just come on when you can. And I said, take your time. And I told her, I said, if something happens down there, I said, I'll be hugging Eddie's neck in a few minutes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's the reason why I went down that hall. I wasn't scared. I wasn't afraid. It was the best piece ever was. No, man. Now, the next time I, I go down that hall, I might, I might be scared to death. But God will still be there. Yeah, yeah. I really believe this. I believe that, and I hear people say, well, I'm wanting to die. I don't know about that. I mean, uh, you ain't that spiritual. Uh, we want to live as long as we can. I ain't afraid of dying going to hell, but I got a good looking woman I want to stay with. I got a family. I got some more big sloppy grand youngins that I, I think a lot of, my youngins. A lot of good friends. Got a good church I'd hate to leave. But I believe when death comes, I believe God will take that fear away. Because I'll say this, and then I will hush. There's a lot of put on in the world. But I've seen people die with their hand in there. I pray, hey, that ain't no time to put on. When you're looking death in the face, it ain't no time to put on. They see something that we ain't seen. Anybody got anything else? God leading you tonight and teaching them out there. The earth. I think about so many times about that hope that we have in Him this morning, this afternoon, what 
what it means to me is the hope that this world can't take away. Amen. It seems as though as I've got older, this last several years seems like a, I don't have much in common with the world anymore out there. It seems like a, just you don't really want really to go home like a, you know you said there a minute ago. I mean, nobody wants to die, but I believe we seem like we have more on the other side than what we've got on this yeah. side. Yeah. You know? And uh, it, uh, that's why that song 310 or at Glad Reunion Day uh, that I like so well, I think it's, uh, you know, the best reunion probably we could ever think of down here when we know best what kind of reunion we're going to have over there. Right. When we see some of our loved ones or whatever. But uh, anyway, I love the Lord. I, I thank you for blessings upon my life. Amen. Amen. Thank you for some church here. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? I talked about that hope. Hebrews Bible says that that hope is both sure and yeah. steadfast. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. What I started to say, I'm enjoying tonight. Yeah. Glad to have you back with us. Yes. And it's been good to be in church tonight. Amen. 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 You know, I thank God for saving my soul. You know, Ted was asking me earlier if I was going to get to try to make it to church. I told Ted I'm, I'm hoping so. And I was looking forward to coming tonight. Amen. I praise God for that blessing. Amen. But you talking about people we're looking forward to. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. Amen. But I'm looking forward to seeing my little baby. Amen. 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 And all my other loved ones, but especially my little girl. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, when my time comes to go, I don't want no grief and I want rejoicing. Because I'm looking forward to being with the Lord. And I'm looking forward to what He's got for me. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, Phil, when I was sitting there thinking he was talking about that a while ago, and you know, our country, there's over 60 million little ones left this world. Mm -hmm. It shed in some blood. You know, when we get to heaven, those little ones ain't going to look around and say, you aborted me. Mm -hmm. Now, there ain't going to be no, none of that there. And that mother or that dad, or anybody, if they get saved by the grace of God, when they see that little, they're going to be in reunion. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Hey, them little aborted babies will be in heaven, but they got just as much to praise Jesus about as me and you have. Amen. That's right. Because it takes grace to save them. God made a way for them. Right. And uh, it takes grace to save them just like it did you and me. That's right. Anybody else? If not, it's been good to be here. We'll look for you Sunday. Uh, I started to say, bring your leftovers back and we'll eat again Sunday. <laughs> but the uh, way it looks, ain't no leftovers left. And we'll get it the next time, maybe, I hope. But anyway, John, you dismiss us. Good night, God bless you.